In today's video, we're going to check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. The next two videos that you're about to see were captured today, April 23rd, 2024, in Greece. The witnesses record what looks like their sky is completely orange. What the meteorologists are stating is that it's Saharan dust has blanketed the country, which is causing this orange sky. Take a look at these videos and tell me what you think. All right, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what we're, uh, we're back in Greece, by the way, all right? What but the fuck is this? Like, you... what is and going on? Orange. I never saw this since I'm here. It's orange everywhere. It's completely orange. The sun should be there somewhere. But look there. But look at... <laughs> it looks like there's graphene or like black. This is nuts. This is really nuts. It's literally orange. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's orange. <laughs> Everything is orange. There's no filter on. Nothing. Look at the green light, how it what? comes out, how it pops out. Mm, the lights not, of the cars. It's not the light. Like, it's not normal. <laughs> and it doesn't look like a reality on the No, it looks like a video game. There's no filter on nothing. That's pretty crazy. I could only imagine if that's just dust or something circulating in the air, there's a lot of people breathing in whatever that is. Seems like the government has turned on the Mars filter. Alrighty, so... If it's just me, tell me it's just me. But I have to ask. I don't even know if this fucking video is going to get literally anywhere. And uh, if it does, cool. If it doesn't, also cool. But does it just feel so fucking weird? Like everything. Everything feels so fucking weird. Like you go to work every day, you pay your bills, but it just doesn't feel right. Like the vibe, like literal vibe of the world, like just kind of feels off. Like why are we going to work? Why are we paying our bills? Like, why are we paying taxes? Because it just seems so, like, fucking pointless at this point. Like, where we are is, like, like a, like a fucking, like, humanity and, like, the U.S. Like, it just feels so fucking pointless. And it just, it's been just dawning on me, you know? Like, what are we doing paying all this shit and paying these taxes, but then, like, they're just doing whatever the fuck they want with our money... And our voices aren't heard. And we can't afford a fucking house. We can't afford a house. Our voices aren't heard. They're sending money everywhere but to where it needs to go, which is like our own fucking country. And I don't know, like our roads and our infrastructure and our fucking bridges, they're getting taken down. It's just everything feels so fucking weird. Does it not or is it just me? Because it just feels fucking weird. Me and my buddy were talking about it at work and I want to know, does the world just feel really really fucking weird right now? Like why are we doing what we why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we doing this? What's the end goal of what we're doing right now? Because it just keeps getting harder to do the fucking thing that we all have to do every day which is work. It's harder to go to work when you know that the goal that you want, you want a house, well, it's just, it's getting further away, it's getting further away, it's getting more fucking unaffordable, it's getting more impossible. You want a car? Car rates are fucking more impossible. Insurance rates, more impossible. Groceries, more, everything's more expensive, but we're not getting paid more. They're getting paid more, but we're not getting paid more. It's like the left arm goes to the homeless and the poor, housing the migrants, the right arm goes to fucking the rich, and then you're stuck in the middle, and you're just getting fucking tugged left, right, left, right, left, right. Yeah, what happens when you just rip us in half? Just rip me in fucking half at this point. Because I don't want to play this game anymore. Let me know if that's how you feel. Because that's how I feel. This shit's wild. Like, I don't know what we're doing anymore. My neighbor's just fucking walking her dog. She's like, oh, look, Nick's having a fucking breakdown. I done. I'm not gonna lie when I first seen this video because I didn't watch it all the way through I just kind of do a glance to see what the video is about I thought he was gonna be talking about the weather, you know stuff after the eclipse things like that I had no idea that this was gonna take a left turn into financials and livelihood I'm not gonna say this individual is crazy because it is getting harder out there And there's not really much that we can do about it unless we start really like pushing for more money more 
support from our jobs if that's the biggest complaint is that all we do is work then we need to start complaining to the people that we're working for unless we're absolutely afraid of the people that we're working for and we're afraid of losing our jobs that's the only reason why i would see not going to your employer or your boss uh, hopefully we figure out a good way to make more money to keep up with this inflation because right now where it stands though we are getting left behind what is probably the weirdest, and some might say the scariest place in space, is known as the Great Nothing. And it might take you a second to really wrap your head around what this looks like. First, I want you to understand how we classify different areas of space. There is interplanetary space, which is the space within the confines of a star system, like our solar system, for example. This area is defined by the heliosphere, which is just a fancy name for saying how far the sun's solar winds reach. After this, you'll find interstellar space, which is the space between various star systems. In the Milky Way, there's an average distance of about five light years of interstellar space between stars. Then finally, you have intergalactic space, which is the distance of space between galaxies and makes up 90% of the entire universe. The largest region of intergalactic space that we know of is called the Boutes Void, or better known as the Great Nothing. This area of space is 330 million light years in diameter, or about 3,000 times bigger than the Milky Way. And it should hold thousands of different galaxies, but it only holds 60. My buddy just sent me this insane video of a huge explosion while he's on vacation at New Smyrna Beach in South Florida. The only thing in that general direction is Cape Canaveral. They don't have any scheduled rocket launches until at least April 28th. They don't even have any documented rocket launches until May 6th, people. Look at the size of that cloud. That looks like a damn mushroom cloud. I'm not trying to fear monger, but like, damn. Massive. That's miles away. I mean, somebody help me figure this out. That's insane. Look at the size of that cloud once again. I'll show you the scheduled rocket launch, but I'm very confused. That is massive. That's miles. That's not any normal explosion, people. What the heck? I mean, that is enormous. That, that is an enormous is explosion. Mass. That's miles. Wildfires don't away. even do that. I mean, as you can clearly see here, people, this is the nearest scheduled rocket launch, okay, that was actually announced. There is one that's rumored to happen on April 28th, but, like, what could it possibly be? I mean, the news isn't even reporting on this right now. I need another local witness immediately to tell me what's going on. That's... Pretty bizarre. That did look like a mushroom cloud, depending on where it's at. It could also have been a test run of some sort of rocket, but again, like this individual said, there really wasn't, there isn't any launches happening unless they were doing unannounced launching, but there wasn't any launches being done within this time frame. So it is pretty interesting as to what was that, because that definitely looked like a mushroom cloud. If, if any of you have any information as to what that was in Florida, leave a comment down below letting me know because I'm pretty curious. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. For the, and for the people that are subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed to the channel. And, and to the people that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of questions, for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment with question for DK so that I can find it in the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. And, and stick around to the end of this video where I answer some of those questions. Multiple breaking news stories have come out over the course of the last week related to the multiple ongoing UFO investigations by the US government. In this video, I want to touch on two of those stories. The first one was the public release by former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, Christopher Mellon, of a signal message exchange he had with a senior government official that was ultimately referred to Congress related to a confirmed crash retrieval that occurred in Kingman, Arizona. This release by Christopher Mellon was in response to two days earlier, the public release via a FOIA request by John Greenwald at theblackvault.com of email exchanges and signal exchanges related to the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, the Pentagon's new UFO office, in their efforts to get whistleblower David Grush to come in for a meeting to describe the programs that he discovered. In the course of that email exchange, there was an exchange between Christopher Mellon and the director of Arrow, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, in which Kirkpatrick was trying to get in touch with Grush. In response to the release of that, which we'll touch on, 
Christopher Mellon dropped this bombshell. This is going to be a dusty episode, so let's dive right in. On Monday, April 22nd, Chris Mellon posted the following screenshot to his Twitter account with an accompanying Substack post explaining the context of this exchange between Chris Mellon in the blue and a senior unnamed government official in gray. The message thread starts off by the unnamed senior official stating that himself or herself and another person have been making huge progress in getting into the crash retrieval program. Following a small statement about how people would be slack-jawed by what they found, he then gave one of the most important details we've seen in a public release, which states, quote, Right now, we haven't gone that far back. We're dealing with the recovered UAP that landed in Kingman, Arizona in the 50s. We are vacuuming up info as redacted gets read in. The assumption is it's the same person referenced in the first message. Also noting that they are on the inside, given that he's talking about them getting read into the program. Again, with classified programs, there's need to know access, so you have to be granted access to the underlying information. Quote, we now know the management structure and security control systems and ownership of the crash retrieval. We also know who recovers landed or crashed UAPs under what authorities. We also know that a still highly classified memo by the Secretary of the Air Force in the 50s is still in effect to maintain its cover for the UAPs. And note, in his last message, we also know the SES-2, that's just a ranking label for where they're ranked within the hierarchy, who's the Air Force gatekeeper, which is also redacted, with a note from Christopher Mellon that that person's name has been referred to Congress. Now, this message is explosive for a variety of reasons, not just because of the confirmation of what was already a known crash retrieval in the Kingman, Arizona case, but more specifically providing a pathway for us to be able to actually validate or verify this to be true by stating the knowledge of the management structure, the security protocols, the controlling agencies, and specific names of gatekeepers. As many of you who follow this channel will recall, this is similar to some of the level of detail that David Grush provided the intelligence community inspector general, as well as the congressional committees. Now, some of that is also a little bit up for debate based on the FOIA request from Black Vault that shows the exchanges between Grush and the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, which touches on some of the complexities of dealing with this issue as it relates to some of these security guidelines. But before we get into the deeper background and context, I want to briefly double click on the importance of this message coming directly from Christopher Mellon. If you followed the story or you followed this channel for the last several years, you know that there's a cadre of former government officials that all have different varying versions or aspects of the core UFO crash retrieval story. The likes of Lou Elizondo and doctors Eric Davis, Jim Lukatsky, Colm Kelleher, etc. Of that cohort, Chris Mellon has been more conservative in his public statements about the possibility that the origins are non-human in nature. Over the course of the last six months to a year, he's become a little bit more aggressive in that posture, but always providing caveats that we don't really know. Now, the fact that he would go so far out on his skis by publishing the signal message signals to me that he is trying to send a little bit of a message or a shot across the bow that we know where to look and we know who's involved and we're talking to the legislative branch about this issue uh, as opposed to the executive branch, which is where the DOD and the IC, the alleged gatekeepers, exist. That change of posture is notable coming from the likes of a Chris Mellon. Now, this whole kerfuffle started as the result of the public release of a FOIA request sent by John Greenwald at Black Fault, which detailed the exchanges between Arrow, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, and UFO whistleblower David Grush to try to adjudicate the claims that Grush made in a News Nation interview at the end of 2023, stating that it is a lie that the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office tried to contact Grush in order to come in for an interview. 
There is. There's sort of this sense among some whistleblowers, Grush included, that, you know, Arrow is trying to sort of cover up what happened. And, and you'll, this quote here is interesting. Basically, Dr. Kirkpatrick today said that he had tried reaching out to UFO whistleblower David Grush several times to talk to him recently and didn't get a response. David Grush sent me that text message and said, I have zero emails or calls from them. That is a lie. The article starts off by listing out an email thread on November 14th in which Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick is emailing Grush about a meeting that was scheduled for them to meet in person in which Grush did not show up. That is followed by an exchange between Christopher Mellon and Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. In this case, Christopher Mellon's name was not redacted, although everyone else's names in the exchanges except for one control officer within the DOD was also redacted. And that exchange included a very interesting detail here in the second message from Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, in which he states that there is a criminal investigation occurring and being conducted by the DOJ, which is why Arrow was not able to just go to the intelligence community inspector general who Grush provided his testimony to that was ultimately forwarded to the intel committees about the existence and the reality of the program and the insiders that he talked to. And one of the pushback notes that Chris Mellon states in that exchange is that Grush does not know if Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick is a target of that criminal investigation. The rumors about the possibility of a criminal investigation stemming from the testimony provided by David Grush to the ICIG have been swirling for some time now, but we now have confirmation through an official channel, FOIA, from the former director of Arrow that there is in fact a criminal investigation related to the allegations of David Grush that is currently ongoing. And it should be noted that this does present challenges in Grush and or other whistleblowers' ability to speak publicly about what may be related to an ongoing criminal investigation. It is important to note, however, that there are five layers to the allegations of David Grush that do include the possession of material of non-human origin, whether that's craft or bodies, but it also includes other aspects, such as the illegal withholding of classified information from Congress, whistleblower retaliation, misappropriation of funds, and targeted disinformation campaigns. So that criminal investigation could be related to any one of those layers of Grush's allegations. The rest of the documents released in this FOIA request include a series of email exchanges between David Grush and Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick trying to coordinate the necessary security waivers to allow Grush to speak freely with the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office without worrying about running afoul of his security oath. Now, there are a lot of interesting details in understanding how these classified programs work, and Grush did bring up some legitimate possible concerns about his ability to be able to speak freely with Arrow. Although his statements publicly about Arrow not reaching out to him are proven false in this FOIA request, so the jury is still out, we can do a part two if there's enough interest in diving deeper into the details of that exchange between Grush and Kirkpatrick. The U.S. government just released, apparently by accident, the Project Aqua stuff. Did you see this? No. This is crazy. It's Kona Blue. Homeland Security just released this. Deaths and injuries as a result of interaction with advanced aerospace vehicles. So they're admitting that people are dying as a result of contact with or being in the proximity of these vehicles. Families can't get compensated for the deaths or injuries to loved ones. Because that, it's all under wraps, top secret. That's just a fact, okay, that that is happening. When there are measurable physical effects of a phenomenon, we can say conclusively the phenomenon is real. Right. So I got this from someone in the U.S. government. He sent me this. The above is 100% legit. I was read into this program, but told never to tell anyone. It's now been released. As you can see, and it began as a result of my old program, AATIP. I signed a document saying I would never talk about Kona Blue and similar efforts. I can't believe that AARO would have released it. There's enough going on in the skies, but not just the skies underwater, that the U.S. military has been forced to respond to it. Man, it seems like a lot this week I've just been hearing Kona Blue repeating over and over again. 
Apparently, they've released documentation saying that, hey, yeah, we have some advanced equipment out there somewhere. We don't know exactly how it works. And if you get too close to it, you may lose your life. It just makes me wonder, is it man-made equipment? And they're just letting people know, hey, if you come near this stuff, it's going to evaporate you. And they're just using the excuse that it might be extraterrestrial? Kind of suspicious. Oh, these the, giants. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the Anunnaki, uh, they are these beings that came from off-world. So these are aliens. These are aliens. Now, what's interesting about these aliens is that they're not little green men with antenna. Yeah. They're actually hominids, bilateral bipedal hominids. They look like, just like us. Okay. They slice them in half. They have two forward-face-looking eyes, two hands, legs. They put their pants on one leg at, one leg at a time like us. But, but do they, they look more like us or more like come on, come us? On, <laughs> <laughs> they look like they, we look like them. Okay. Oh. We actually look like them. Okay. And the reason why is because we have their genetics and their DNA inside of our bodies. Mm. Now, what's interesting is these beings were a, 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 a space-faring race that broke away from the Pleiadian star system. The Pleiadian star system is a group of stars called the Seven Sisters in the night sky. You can see six stars with the naked eye. Now, these stars in ancient times, according to ancient texts and tablets, there was an ancient galactic war there. Okay. Most of the information from Star Wars comes from this text. And this war, they had these destroyers like Death Stars. They don't call them that, but they, they call them the Brahma Astra and Brahma Astra Honda weapons that actually can release a weapon that can destroy planets. Okay. Imagine if you were in a star system and a planet is being blown up and you're in a nearby planet. You, you got to get out of off it. of your planet. Yeah. Mm. This created something called space refugees. Nobody's talking about this. So where, where are you getting this information again? Where is the Mahabharata, from? the Bhagavad Gita, the Indian Vedas? So, so these are Indian, ancient Indian texts. That's right. Five thousand years ago. Yeah. Okay. And the Enuma Elish. I just want to let you Sumerian. know. Oh, and I want to get to this, but yeah. for this entire episode, yeah, we're not fact checking. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're not debating. We're not pushing. It. Take us down yeah. the rabbit hole. We want to see how down. deep it goes. So people can listen to what I'm saying and they can go look all of it up. Fuck them. <laughs> Take us down the rabbit I'm hole. I'm taking Billy. you, man. Okay, let's go. So we're talking about yes, the, and <laughs> we're talking about the evidence, the very first evidence of space refugees. So you're seeing this in these ancient Indian texts. Yeah. Okay. You come across this mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, let me see if there's some truth to this because yeah. I'm seeing this across multiple ancient Indian texts. Right. Any other texts referencing this? The Terra Papers, an ancient indigenous American text Ooh. as well. Okay. A very little known text that hardly anyone talks about. The Hopi tribe uh, elders have, have written this book based on that text and published it actually. It's called the Terra Paper, so that it wasn't just in, in uh, indigenous lore, but it made it finally to publishing. So it's actual text that we can all read and get access to. It reads like the Star Wars movie. Just take <laughs> out the love stories and all that. And what's interesting is it talks about, again, these same galactic wars going on. People fleeing from that region of space, looking for other planets, Orion, Aldebaran, um, Sirius A, B, and C, which we know the Dogon talk about people coming from Sirius B which is a, a star that ran out, of, ran out of fuel, and of course, Earth. And they came here to create a breakaway civilization. Just like if there was a war, and there, which were, there was in mm -hmm. our solar system, that's what we call Mars, the god of war, we're going to be like, you know, we got to get off this planet because the debris is going to destroy us. So we're the, we're the product of pussy aliens, basically. <laughs> like aliens who weren't ready to bang and fight for their future and their freedom. They just ran. We're defectors. They were, the, that... they were the elites that had the access to the to the ships mm. that can take them from one star to another. So are they like the politicians that like didn't go to Vietnam? Right. Exactly. <laughs> God, so yeah. we are with a pocket of like rich, they're, they're, privileged they're, kids. They're yeah. the guys with the $10,000 suits that just sent everyone out yes. to die. They would be protesting at Columbia, right? Correct. Now. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah, that, good, that's yeah. who these people are. Uh, mm. And so some of them came to Earth. And so Anunnaki is a general term. It doesn't mean one race. It's just like if, if all of us here got in a spaceship and flew to Mars and we met a Martian and he said, who are you guys? We'd say Earthlings. Got it. They would, they, but they maybe would call us right. Anunnaki. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm Billy Carson from Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So they would get, so, oh, they're Earthlings. That's one term, but we're all different races here. Right. Right. So, but that's, so Anunnaki is a, is a, is a term to, to say those who came from heaven to earth, that's it. In Africa, they call it the Nituru, which means the same exact thing. The gods that came from heaven to earth and turned mud into a kingdom. Mm. Now, the civilization they built is the Atlantean civilization. 
So this is where we hear about Atlantis, the yes. mythology of Atlantis. Right. Got it. Okay. They built the Atlantis. And, and, and where is the uh, evidence for this? Where do you read about that? Well, if you look in the text, um, if you, well, a lot of the Indian texts, the okay. Vedas, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the, the ancient lore of the indigenous aboriginals, the, the uh, Terra Papers, the Enuma Elish, the Epic of Atra Hasis, the Code of Hammurabi, uh, the Myth of Atana. There's so many tablets I can just keep going down, so down, down. Everybody's referencing yeah. the Atlantean civilization. Yeah. Obviously, the most popular one is, was it uh, Plato's uncle or something like that? Uh, Pla oh, Plato. Plato wrote about this. Oh, yeah. he did? Yes, he did. Yes, okay. You know? Got it. Got right. it. Got it. Got it. And so, you know, you start looking at this information. That was more recent. I mean, when I say recent, it's not as ancient. But the account uh, of Plato's account of Atlantis is, is not that ancient. But we're talking about... The ring city, but that was just one capital. So that ring city that was being described is one capital of dozens that existed on Earth at the same time. Do we know where these other ones might be? Is there uh, any remnants? They were on every continent. Every single continent. We're standing on Atlantis right now. We're sitting right on top of Atlantis. It was New York. Yes. Everyone on this planet is on top of Atlantis. Mm. <laughs> so Remember when you that. start to look uh, at the Americas... You discover that there were so many pyramids in the Americas, there were literally thousands of them. What happened to them? The Catholic Church blew up the tops of these pyramids and built churches on top of them. <laughs> no, no, no. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. Mark, bro. bro. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was <laughs> raised Catholic. They never told us that. <laughs> no, no, they won't tell you Give that. Give me a sentence. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> This was a really interesting interview. There's more to it. This is like a part one of multiple parts. I really enjoyed this. And it, it made me understand Billy Carson, at least as far as what he does a little bit more. Because if what he's saying is true, he's really going through a lot of scrolls and ancient texts. That means he's got to be very intelligent to, to be able to decipher all of these texts and, and scrolls. That's a lot of information that one person is soaking in. And to tie them all together and they're all kind of repeating the same story, that's really interesting. If we believe that. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying that it is an interesting theory. It's an interesting topic. And that's an interesting individual to be able to do all that. But nonetheless, could you imagine what it's like reading all of these ancient scrolls, ancient texts about a world that's just hard to believe? It almost sounds like a sci-fi film, kind of like he said, it's like Star Wars. And you're just reading this and you're like, is this real? Was this something that actually happened in the past? Because that's pretty crazy. I know a lot of people aren't really fans of Billy Carson, but man, I really find what he says extremely fascinating. Whether it's real or fake, it's a good story nonetheless. There's this crazy story that happened, I think it was in Germany, mm -hmm. where this guy, he was hired to fix uh, a refrigerator on a train, Yeah, right? It was like, no, it was a freezer. Mm -hmm. So he ended up getting locked in the freezer, right? And he's like, shit, I'm trapped in here. Nobody else is coming to save me. I'm going to die here. So he took out his notes and he started writing. These are my final moments. Yeah. I'm going to die in this freezer. Shit, it's getting cold. Blah, blah, blah. He's writing. I, I miss out on all these things in life. And it's getting colder. I can feel myself slipping away. Yeah. And he died. Yeah. But what happened was the, the guards ended up opening up the freezer, mm -hmm. seeing his dead body. But they realized, yo, this freezer's not working. It's not even cold in here. Whoa, really? So he thought himself to death. Damn, bro. Because that was the reason he was going there to fix it anyways in the first yeah, place. Yeah, we'll see. It, well, how are you going to fix the freezer if it's running? Yeah. So it was just all in his head. That's crazy, so bro. He, he, thought, he thought of dying so badly, he ended up he dying. He ended up actually dying. Let me summarize in very brief what I am actually saying. I'm saying that there was a cataclysm at the end of the last ice age. It was called the Younger Dryas. There was a civilization like all others that emerged out of shamanism, which had quite advanced astronomy, which was able to map the world, had a knowledge of longitude. I'm not saying they had machines. I'm not saying they had motor cars. I'm not saying they sent spaceship to the moon. I'm saying that they were 
destroyed at the end of the Ice Age. There were a very small number of survivors, but those survivors settled amongst other hunter-gatherer peoples and benefited from their knowledge and exchanged knowledge with them. And if I were a survivor of this civilization, I would head for hunter-gatherers and I would try and make my home amongst them so that I could have some hope of surviving. And that's all that I'm suggesting. He goes around and tells people it wasn't their ancestors that did that. No, I don't tell people that. Well, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't. He doesn't cite a, a, a civilization that created I wouldn't doubt that sometime in the past there was a civilization that was fairly advanced, fairly intelligent, and there was some kind of world-altering event that made them either pass on or they had to travel elsewhere and spread their knowledge. I, I can definitely believe that. And even to this day, if something apocalyptic happened, of course we would have our aggression, there would be people out there killing people, there would also be a lot of people going out to other people that are survival types, people that are the hunter-gatherer types. I 100% think that that'll happen for sure still to this day. In today's era, the hunter and gatherers are technically the business owners and we're just surviving off of them, but it's a different form of hunter-gatherer type of vibe, you know? Leave a comment down below on where you stand. If the world was to come to an end, are you a hunter-gatherer type or would you go to a hunter-gatherer type? We are screwed. Yep, life and the internet has literally just completely changed and you are absolutely doomed. So OpenAI, who you may know, developed ChatGPT, right? And I mean, AI is getting pretty out of hand now, but just you wait until you see this. So a few weeks back, they unveiled their new video generation AI, which is called Sora. And yes, this has been out for a few weeks, but I guarantee you haven't seen some of this because it is flipping mind blowing. Now, if you look at the video that's playing in the top, this was generated by this completely AI. But the videos I'm about to show you are just 20 times crazier. So, I mean, look at this video. Two dogs. This is not real. This is AI. Nah, nah, nah. You can literally see the wind blowing. You can see shadows. Nah, that is nuts. This one is absolutely... I, I genuinely I don't even know what to say. As you can see in this video, it's a woman just recording out of a train in Tokyo by the looks of it. You can see the city, you can see the buildings, you can see the flipping shadow in the window of the reflection. Oh my god. Please tell me how, how you guys can tell if this is real or fake, because there is no way. Like, that looks real. 100% real. Now this one, a drone over what looks like Sicily or some kind of, like, city in Italy or something. How is this not real? What the hell? So basically, in the descriptions, he said the prompt that he used for the generation to generate this. He just said, a drone circulates around a beautiful historic church on a rocky Amalfi Coast view. Shout out to Eduardo Borgs, because he's the guy that's created all of these somehow. But seriously, this just proves how scary everything is going. And the Rocco's Basilic theory is looking more and more likely. Make sure you hit that follow button, and I will keep you updated. <laughs> Question, guys, then, are UFOs getting better? A... Alien wife is complaining that they have the old UFO. No, she Shelly and you know Shelly and Ken can have one, but we can't. Did you know I'm talking to you with my hand because our Bluetooth doesn't work on yeah. this? Looking at Shelly up there, listening to a podcast, having to probe everyone by hand <laughs> manually. These are the concepts. I mean, if if we're developing our technology, then they certainly are developing their technology. UFO sightings are only in certain parts of the world, but actually, you know, you look around. There's a lot of UFO activity in Mexico. Vatican has a, has a thousand years of, there, there's a full section yeah, in the Vatican really. Library of UFO encounters and, and, and high strangeness. Or like when in, it, are something weird happening at the Vatican? What? That's, no way. <laughs> not happening. Or if like it, we're seeing a little bits and pieces of a different time. You know, with UFOs, are they in the, are they in the same time frame that we are in? Mm. Yeah, I'm almost a hundred percent sure. If aliens are real, if there's extraterrestrial life, even interdimensional at this point, I'm almost a hundred percent sure that there is always advancements in technology. Even for us, there's always advancement in technology. No matter how intelligent these extraterrestrial life forms are, they're probably still developing, making equipment even better and overall upgrading at all times. Now maybe their upgrades are every thousand years or so, but they're still probably upgrades. That's if aliens and things like that are real. And maybe that's another reason why we see UFO sightings is because they're coming to Earth to collect the resources that they need to make their equipment better. Pretty, it's a pretty fun theory. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If this was disclosed, it would collapse the fundamentalist orthodox belief systems of every religion on earth. There is a record of technologies that existed on earth of civilization more advanced than we are now. 
And the question is, were there some use of some type of electrogravitic levitation technologies that were used? The other problem is, even when the Smithsonian paid $5 million to simulate using mathematics and the technology uh, that archaeologists say existed back in the time of, of the pyramids, those obelisks like the Washington Monument, but those were all one big piece of stone, they couldn't raise the smallest one with everything we know now about mathematics and engineering with what's been postulated. So there's something doesn't add up there. But I think it's a bridge too far to claim they were built by ETs. But they were certainly, their construction and the precision of the stones cut, how far they were moved, how they were put into place. There are a lot of questions I have, but I have no proof of how that might have happened, except the man I referred to earlier from Redstone Arsenal area, uh, who who uh, is given materiel occasionally. It's not always extraterrestrial. He has been given uh, objects that are tens of thousands of years old or older that are technological that have been found in the ocean and elsewhere that uh, were of human origin and were extremely advanced technologies. So I believe that it's likely that on Earth, prior to the modern era, there have been civilizations far advanced beyond where we are that for which we have very little record. And when that record is found, uh, I think it's kind of swept under the, the, the carpet. You know, it's interesting. There were years ago when they did the, the Mars uh, images and they found that there were these obelisks and strange looking objects on Mars. I ta I went out to the Goddard space flight center here outside DC to meet with a, uh, Mark Carlotto and some other scientists there. And they said, yep, it's been pixelated out for the public, but there are structures there. And uh, they were very ancient, but we're talking millions of years old, millions. And I was out in California after I had disclosed this to some people. And a man came up to me from JPL, Jet Propulsion Labs, and I didn't know him. He knew who I was and said, Dr. Greer, here's the issue. You're right, those exist, but we can't disclose that. I said, why? It's not an operational ET device. It's not, you know, it's old. He says, yes, but you don't understand how powerful the th this information is. I said, why? He says, if this was disclosed, it would collapse the fundamentalist orthodox belief systems of every religion on earth. I said, what? This science and this evidence is being kept secret for religious reasons? He says, yes, because the creation myths. Uh, now, I'm not talking about most people, but the, the, those sort of fundamentalist orthodox belief systems, they'd all crumble. They'd be completely gone. And you would have to come up with something a little more rational, right, um, than the world is 6,000 years old. And we, you know, used to ride uh, dinosaurs, you know, like horses, if you go to the Creation Museum in Kentucky. So <laughs> this is true, by the way. Um, those of you in urban areas, you need to kind of wake up a bit about the rest of the world. But uh, that's just how it is. So what I tell people is that some of this evidence has been kept secret, not for scientific reasons, but for social belief uh, and how much that information would disrupt uh, most people's foundations of their paradigm and belief. We human beings have the ability to visualize things. As adults, we've forgotten the power of visualization, but young children still have it. So they invent imaginary play friends, and they talk to them, and they're real, and they're playing outside, but the mother looks out the window. She only sees her son or her daughter playing. But the son and the daughter are talking, conversing with unseen friends that she can't see, but the children can see it. So it's very difficult for a mother to not understand when the child comes in and tells her stories about her imaginary play friends. 
And the mother who doesn't understand, oh no, you're just imagining that. And tell the kid that, oh no, you're just imagining that. Let them be a child. Let them grow up. Let them have their imaginary friends. They're real to them. We knock that out of children as they grow up. Children are extremely creative when it comes to seeing certain imaginary friends, if you will. I don't know if we're imaginary or not, because I feel like when I was a young child, I had an imaginary friend. I was told that it was an imaginary friend, so I didn't believe that she was real. In the moment, that was real to me. And it could have very well been. It could have been a spirit. It could have been a demon. It could have been something real. But, but because it was told to me that it was not real, I stopped believing in it. Then I stopped seeing it. What if I had a special part of my brain untapped that I could see past a certain veil? You know, I could see in other realms or something. But because I had parents or adults telling me, ah, hey, you're just imagining things, it cut that imagination out. Could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. I'm not sure. I tend to believe that you should let your kids be very imaginative unless it's causing harm. But as if it's not causing harm, who cares if they're talking to themselves? As long as they're not harming anyone or themselves, I think it's completely fine to have an imaginary friend. And who's to say it's imaginary? It could be a very real entity. Which is kind of scary on itself, because what is it exactly? What do you guys think? Do you have any imaginary friends? Or if you've had kids, did they have imaginary friends? And or do they still have imaginary friends? Let me know in the comments. Scariest mysteries in the world that will seriously change your life. This shows all of the scariest unsolved mysteries, theories, and weird things that are going on in the world that we are living in. And yeah, it's a pretty fat list. And in this series, we're going to be going from the top to the bottom tier, which is literally called Game Over. We ain't messing about with the small ones. Yeah, I'm starting at the top, but they ain't flipping small. So if you can't sleep tonight, sorry. Not sorry. Solipsism. Stick with me. Sounds confusing. Kind of is, but it's pretty scary. So what actually is it? Well, basically, it's the ideology that only one's mind is sure to exist. Now, what the flipping hell does that mean, right? What makes this really scary is that there is no way to prove it, and there is absolutely no way to disprove it. So you can't even say, oh, it's not true, because even scientists say you physically can't disprove it, and this is why. But the foundations are basically this, which is knowledge of anything outside of your own mind is unsure. It's unknown. You don't know if it actually exists or not. Because if you're the only person alive, everyone you see around you, you watching this video right now, is just an illusion your mind has made up so that you don't feel so lonely in this world all on your own. That's your mind playing tricks on you, so there's no way to disprove that, because a scientist trying to prove or disprove it wouldn't be real. Nah, honestly, it's really flipping confusing, but when you actually deep it, it's pretty damn terrifying. But long story short, you can only be sure of what is existing in your mind or what is right in front of you now. You don't actually know what's behind your head. I don't know what's behind me right now. It could be nothing, and then when I turn around and look at it, it spawns in. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically what that is, and I'm not going to look into it anymore because I will be too scared. So hit that follow button, and I'll see you tomorrow. Book of Enoch, powerful book. You know that Enoch was a real powerful man because he's talked about in the Bible. Yet his book is not in the Bible. <laughs> it was left out by accident on purpose. And the reason why is because he's talking about, and he calls these beings by their names, beings that were not from earth, that came here from up above and engaged mankind. They taught us how to build weapons. They taught us about perfume and makeup. They taught us, taught us how to make jewelry and beer and all this other crazy stuff, right? So these beings uh, were physical corporeal beings. They actually, at some point, even went to war with humans against other humans, putting on clothing and getting swords and everything else. They were having sex with humans. So these weren't like the angels that we're thinking with the fluffy wings. And these were people. I think there was a misconception in some cases as to what is an angel and what is a person based on the level of technology and, and the consciousness of that of those beings. If I were to put you in a spaceship and send you traveling at the speed of light, things would start to get really weird for you very quickly. The first thing that we're going to have to assume here is that I put a force field around your ship, because if I didn't, even colliding with a speck of dust would blow your entire ship to smithereens. So now you're accelerating, and the universe around you actually starts to change its shape. Think of the universe as a four-dimensional fabric, with three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. Because of how fast you're moving, the dimensions of space actually 
actually start to squeeze themselves together for you, allowing you to pass through almost instantaneously. This is going to start to look pretty weird for you as the light from the objects in front of you start to angle themselves toward you and the light from everything behind you can't reach you, leaving nothing but blackness. You arrive at your destination basically immediately, no matter how far the actual distance was, but just because the universe squeezed itself together for you doesn't mean that it did for everyone else. So while seconds or minutes might have passed for you, thousands of years could have passed on Earth and you would never be able to go back. But they told me the main thing you have to tell people, they said they must get rid of karma if you want to go on to the new Earth. And believe me, it's beautiful. The descriptions they've given, it is beyond belief. And they said, you cross over and you don't look back because you don't want to see what's happening behind you. But another thing that's happening, I'll get back to that part, another thing that's happening to us, our diets are changing. Do you notice that? Your diets are changing. They said, you must get away from heavy meats. The body to become lighter, you have to eat lighter foods to raise it. The heavy foods hold you down, especially the meats, the red meats hold you down. You want to raise the body, the vibration, have lighter foods. They said the best foods are live foods. Live foods, they mean fresh fruits and vegetables. Organic if you can get it. But the fresh fruits and vegetables are the best diet. Some chicken and fish, but they stay, stay away from the beef and the pork, especially because of what's being done to it at this time. But those kind of meats will hold you to the earth. You're supposed to be lightening. And you'll get to where you won't want to eat much. But you'll, it's um, fresh fruits and vegetables. You get away from the sugars. They said water is beyond comprehension, the value of water. But they said uh, eventually, as you notice, you're going to be going into all the liquid diets. You'll feel like that's what you want. So you'll notice the effects on your body. Your body's changing. Your diets are changing if you're paying attention to this. Time is speeding up. Everything's going faster. We're becoming more and more sensitive to energies. There's a lot happening if you're, if you're aware of it and paying attention to it. So the um, they gave me an example. Well, it was actually Annie Kirkwood. We were at a, a conference, and we were on a panel. And she gave an example. You know, Annie Kirkwood was the one that wrote Mary's Message to the World. We used to do a lot of work together. She doesn't do it much anymore. But at the conference, she gave this example of what she saw. She said she was shown the Earth out in space. Then she saw it begin to pull apart like a cell begins to divide. And as she saw it begin to pull apart, she saw two Earths. Over here on this one, she heard them saying, we did it, we did it, we did it. Over here on this one, she heard them say, poor thing, she died believing all that. But see, one will not be aware of the other. Just like the Bible says, one will be taken, one will be left, and they won't even know the difference. So it's a very strange thing. And I've asked so many questions about this, trying to understand it. And they keep telling me, we can't give you all the answers because we don't know. This has never happened before in the history of a universe. That entire planet will make the shift. It's the greatest show on Earth, and everybody is out there watching it because they want to see what's going to happen. But uh, we're in the middle of it right now. And I've been trying to understand it more. They said it won't be like all of a sudden you'll wake up one morning and everything's going to be different. It's going to be gradual. And you may not even be aware that you have moved. But all of these things that are happening right now is the Earth getting rid of its karma with the tsunamis and everything like that. It's the old Earth. And we are moving into the new Earth, and it's going to be fantastic. And I know I'm forgetting a lot of stuff there that I need to bring up, but uh, though they said the main thing, yes, in order to do this, you must get rid of karma. It'll have, otherwise, you're condemned to come back again and again, stay with the old Earth until you work it out. And how do you get rid of karma? What's the easy, the quickest way, but not the easiest way to get rid of karma? Some people say, do it back to them. You do it back to them, all you do is keep the wheel moving. You don't resolve anything. And that's what I work with my counseling. You must forgive. You gotta let it go. I tell them, tell the person, you don't have to tell them face to face, you do it mentally. With your mind. Even if the person is dead, you can still do it. Do it with your mind. You'll say, I know we had a contract. It was, it didn't work. We tried, we really tried, it didn't work. Now it's time to tear up the contract. You go your way with love, and I'm going my way. We don't need to be in this anymore at all. You have to release them and really mean it. 
Because I've had clients, they'll say, I can't forgive them. You don't know what they did to me. doesn't matter. We've got to the point that it does not matter anymore. So what if your mother or father mistreated you? That's then. We're moving on. So what if your husband was a jerk? So what if he did, what if he did cheat on you? What if he beat you up? What if he was an alcoholic? So what? That's then. You hold on to that. That's karma. You've got to release it. Let it go. Forgive him and move on. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck. They said the main thing we've got to tell people is get rid of this junk. I call it the baggage in the garbage we carry around. We've got to get rid of it. Let it go. That's the most important thing right now. Another important thing they said you must get rid of is fear. You've got to get rid of fear. And look at the media does. Look at all these things they keep trying. They, they are trying to instill fear in you. They said, think for yourself. Don't get into the fear. Release the karma. Release the fear. And then you can move on. Those are the two important, important things they told me to tell people. I find it really interesting near the end of this video where she was talking about, you know, how to, to merge over to this other earth, if you will. And some of the biggest ways to do that is to release your karma and to not have fear. And it's just like, what if the world leaders of this world on this side of the world know that? And they're trying to keep us here because they're moving over to the other better world and that's why they give us horrible news on the media all the time always something devastating always something drastic always keeps you under a certain level of fear and if you're under a certain level of fear that means you cannot cross over to the other earth pretty interesting theory let me know what you guys think about that in the comments there's some people that aren't really big fans of dolores cannon but there is a lot of people that are I'm not necessarily a fan, but I do enjoy the topics that she talked about. All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and answer some of these questions for question for DK. Let's get into it. Question one from WowTV48. I watched your video about your personal paranormal experience. Could you please make more videos like that? I would love to feature them on my own channel, if that's okay with you. Big fan. Hey, I appreciate that, Wow. Thanks for being a fan of the channel. I have no problem with you posting any of my content, even if it's not storyboard content. Go for it. You're more than welcome to use this content for your channel. And as far as sharing more of my personal experiences, I definitely do have some more, not necessarily paranormal. I have some weird freaky stories. I have some funny stories. I have all different types of stories. They really only just come up depending on the topic. So will I ever share that kind of information again? Oh yeah, most definitely. Once the topic comes out, or if maybe a, maybe if someone comments like a question for DK asking me about a specific topic, then I can go ahead and share that information a little bit more. Hopefully that answered your question. Thank you for commenting. All right, comment number two. Comment from X Brittany RX. Question for DK. Where did you get your organite pyramids? I know there's many sellers who sell fake ones with plastic stones and junk items inside instead of real stones and copper wire. I really want to get one. Good question. I highly recommend checking out Ascension Tools. I'll link uh, the channel banner he has on TikTok. I'm not 100% sure if he's got a YouTube channel, but on TikTok, this individual, Ascension Tools, does have a shop where you can buy authentic organite pyramids, such as these ones right here, where he uses real amethysts, real copper, real crystals in general. They are a little pricey. They can be anywhere from $200 and up. And he does have pocket organite generators that are like $80. So if you're on a, a price budget, be on the lookout. They are kind of expensive, but they're pretty nice pieces. And I think they work. I really do. They give me not better sleep, but they definitely make me dream. That's for sure. Hopefully that answered your question. Thanks for the comment. All right, next question. Question from Maria Mamory Jane 7299. Hopefully I got that name right. I don't think I did. Question for DK. Have you ever seen a shadow person? I have seen them many times. I also have a theory about shadow people. What if shadow people are astral projections of men in black? I can't be the only one that thinks this. What do you think? That's a pretty good question. I definitely have seen shadow people. Now, I have not recently. It's been quite a few years since I've seen a shadow person. I used to catch them out of the corner of my eye, especially when I was a kid. I definitely used to see shadow people. I do have a story about a shadow person that I seen not only when I was a kid, but my mother seen as well. A long time ago, way back in the early 2000s, if not the late 90s, 
uh, we were about to go to Michigan for Christmas. No, 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 excuse me. We were about to go to Michigan for some kind of holiday event. I think it was Easter. As we were packing our vehicle to go from Florida to Michigan at that time, and next thing I know, I seen something on the tree in the distance. It looked like a person standing there. Never really paid any mind to it. I was really young, and I didn't point it out or question it. So we continue to load the vehicle up with our stuff. Next thing I know, my mom starts freaking out because she said she's seen a shadow person in the tree, and she was convinced that it was the Grim Reaper. She was convinced that it was death. So she said, yeah, we're not going to Michigan now, which was a big move for her because that's where all of her family lives, and she loves to visit her family. So for her to call off the trip, pretty big deal. Ended up calling it off, never went to Michigan, but later that day, we heard on the news there was a major accident on I-95 where there was a big pileup and many people died because of it. And at that time frame, we would have been a part of that collision, or at least we would have been a part of that traffic jam that happened. So ever since then, I've been kind of a believer that shadow people definitely are real. Whether they're men in black or not, I do not know about that one. It's a good theory, and it's not a bad one at that. Like, they could definitely be people that are um, remote viewing. They could be people that are remote viewing. That's not a bad guess at all. But I don't know if I necessarily believe that personally. To anybody else that's still watching this video and listening to me talk, have any of you experienced shadow people? Do any of you believe that they're men in black pro astral projecting? Let me know in the comments because it is a really interesting topic. And, and don't be afraid to share your stories as well if you have any. Hopefully I answered your question on that one. Thanks for the comment. All right, next question. Comment from King Norris 4062 If we were to come together that it would be easy to bring down the machine. I think it starts with corporate greed. Where do you think it starts? If you're talking about the US to take down the machine, I think it would start with leaving the workforce in general. Right now, it's not easy to do that because all these big organizations have us basically held down under their thumb. We have to make money to survive and live, to provide for our families, and they know that. So we kind of have no choice but to abide by their ways. But if we had the ability to just stop working, let the companies lose money, then they would start paying the employees more money. They would start incentivizing the employees to stay and keep their job because they need the employees to make money. It is corporate greed. That is where it starts. Hopefully that answered your question. Next comment. Comment from Bear Ramsey. Question for DK. Hey bud, do you ever think of reacting to music again? Because I'm a solid musician and have a ton of good tunes that many creators have done reactions to. Also, do you ever wonder about how Deja Vu does as maybe it could be about situations when we went to sleep. We went out of our plane of our present time into a future moment and the Deja Vu is a memory left over from your astral trip. That's a good question and a good theory. The question to will I ever react to music again? You must have been around for quite a while if you remember me reacting to music because it's been months, many months since I've reacted to music now. So you must have been a subscriber from really, really, really early on and I appreciate you for that if that's the case. I'm not really much of a music reaction channel anymore. I really enjoy doing the conspiracy videos and things like this. If I did start doing music reactions, I would probably put it on a different channel and keep it off of this channel because this channel basically has just become about reacting to conspiracy videos and things like that. But that doesn't mean you cannot advertise your music. Please feel free to link your songs in the comments down below because I have no problem with that. And even if it's murder music, I'm personally okay with that, but not everyone is. And I want to keep it at a level of where everyone can enjoy the music, you know? So if you want to share your music, please leave a link in the comments down below and just let people know that, hey, this is your song and I've given you permission to go ahead and advertise it. And for anyone that's watching this video, if you see this user and if their name is tied to the account that has their music on it, please check them out. Let them know how their music is. And it's about the deja vu theory. That's a really interesting theory. I actually kind of enjoy that. Do I believe it? Not necessarily, but I'm not against it either because it's really out there. What if when we are asleep, our subconscious self goes to a alternate timeline that's maybe 
eight hours or so many hours into the future. Or maybe it's a different timeline that's just taking place in a different part of our future. And when we wake up, we retain those memories in our subconscious thought. And when they happen again, we're like, oh yeah, this happened once. That's a pretty cool theory. I'm not going to lie. Thanks for the comment. All right. Next question. Comment from Michael. Question for DK. Hey, it's Mike, age 44 from California. Do you think if there are aliens, they prefer desert areas? Because I live in LA, Quanta, California, near Palm Springs for the last 15 years and see UAPs almost every night and never seen them in other places I've lived because even Antarctica is considered a desert. And we all know Roswell is too. Maybe their planet has similar attributes to these anyways. Love your content, and it's the first thing I watch every morning. Please keep it coming. Have a blessed day. Thanks, Mike. As far as aliens preferring the desert surrounding, that's a pretty good point. Though in my area, it's not desert. Here in South Carolina, I have a lot of woodlands, a lot of farmland, and I see things in the sky almost every night that aren't your usual aircrafts. Do they like deserts because it's like home to them? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe they like deserts because their home is in the bottom of the ocean and it reminds them of the bottom of the ocean. There's so many things to it that I really don't know on that one because that is a pretty good question. Even when they're all over Alaska, apparently. Uh, aliens are everywhere in Alaska. And that's not very desert-like. It might also have something to do with the tectonic plates and the altitude. But other than that, I really don't know. Thanks for the comment. Next question. Comment from Jen Lynch 5550 Question for DK. Just wondering why you always wear a hat. If it's too personal, don't answer. My son pretty much always wears a hat because of his hairline. But I think he looks good without it. I wear hair pieces because of my thinning hair and I look better with thicker hair. Anyways, love your channel. Thanks, Jen. As far as why I wear the hat, honestly, it's just my brand. I don't have much hair going on up there. Uh, I normally try to keep my head shaved as much as possible because I just it becomes this curly, poofy mess. It's basically like a fro, and I do not like my hair. Uh, so I keep it shaved short, and I wear this hat because this hat is an old hat of mine that I, I created for my brand back when I used to make music. So I just kind of always wear it. It's like one of my favorite hats. Thanks for the comment. All right, next question. Comment from me and Parker against the world. Question for DK. You said you don't believe in physical time travel, i.e. back in the future. But what about mind time travel, i.e. butterfly effect with Ashton Kutcher? Great movie, by the way. It is a theory brought up by ancient alien theorists that ancient civilizations had that technology where you could use your own mind, jump forward and backward in your timelines, and do things differently like the movie Butterfly Effect. Um, do I believe in that? I believe that there is a form of meditation that can make you perceive your future and you can work and alter the things that happen in your mind, but I do not believe that they take physical effect in actual timeline. I am almost 100% certain, for me, I do not think time travel exists. I really do not think it exists in the mind either. I do believe that you can meditate and imagine that you're traveling forward or backwards in time and manipulating it how you see fit, but I do not believe it to actually affect time itself. Now, like in one of my videos where I did say I do believe that you can time travel into the past by looking into the past. I do believe one day we will have a piece of technology, basically like a, a phone or a tablet, that allows us to look and go wherever we want to go in the past as a ghost. We cannot manipulate the past. We cannot alter it. We cannot even talk to people in the past. We can just view it as if we were playing a video game or going over on Google Earth. That's my theory of time travel. Hopefully that answered your question. Thanks. And that's a pretty cool username. Next question. Question from PokeBros4242. 4242. Question for DK. Do you invest in Bitcoin? If not, you should. People will talk negatively about Bitcoin, but I know the truth. That is the biggest wealth transfer of our lifetime. I'm from the future, and that's all I can say. Take care and Godspeed. Hey, poke bros. I do not trade anymore. I used to trade a long time ago. And I'm not going to lie. I've traded Bitcoin in the past. And I've had my successes and I've had my downfalls with trading, especially with Bitcoin. I've actually had fairly decent success with Bitcoin. But, but uh, as far as trading goes, I used to really like to trade. 
But nowadays, I don't really get into it. The market's way too volatile for me, and everything that I hit is not really working right now. So maybe in the future, but as of where it stands right now, no, nah, I don't trade. Thanks for the comment, though. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I hope you enjoyed the length of this video. It was a bit longer, way longer than normal. So I hope you enjoyed the video's length, and I hope you enjoyed the questions that we had for questions for DK. And as always, if you found any of these clips interesting that we watched today, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.